Welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about water reflections and using luminosity mask for editing. We will also do some advanced techniques in Photoshop to really bring out the beautiful details of the reflection, the highlights, and the shadows. So let's jump in and get started. So who doesn't love a water reflection? I think it's one of my favorite things to witness, to see, and to photograph. So I was really excited this winter to have a beautiful clear day where I could capture the beauty of this park in winter. Now it's an amazing natural spring in Texas that is gorgeous all times of year, but I really have to say I, I like the quietness of it in winter. There's no one here swimming. Um, there was only a couple people walking the trail and just the reflections are so gorgeous. So I thought I'd take you through how I would go about editing this to enhance the beautiful reflections, the shadows, and the details in this image. So let's get started. I'm going to start um, here in Lightroom. First thing I want to do is crop the image just a little bit. So I'm going to straighten it and I want to bring in, I don't think that part of the image is necessary for the story. And I'm going to crop this one just a little bit as well. I really want this center eye to go to this part of the image. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I would begin my normal adjustment. So I like to bring down the highlights a little bit, open up the shadows a little, maybe see what it does to enhance the blacks. And as I look at this image, I also want to monitor the white balance. So the area was so warm and brown tones that it has a lot of yellow qualities, but I want to just shift the temp just a little tiny bit to the blue side. You can see the difference. It's very subtle. So here's before and here's after. I just want to give it a little bit more of a coolness. So as I'm thinking about this image, the story is the reflections and the shadows. And so what I want to do for this image, I think it's going to stand out much stronger of that kind of story if I convert it to black and white. So an easy way to get started is just to let Lightroom convert it. So I'm going to click black and white. Now the next step is always going to be to come down to your black and white mixer. We need to adjust these colors. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure there's not any purple or magenta. So I'm going to desaturate those. I also want to get rid of any green tones. Now, the next thing is I know that there were orange tones in the image. And so you can see if I bring those down, it's really darkening my shadows. I'm going to bring it down just a little. And then there's a lot of red in this image. You can see as I go one way or the other. So you just have to decide kind of what you want. I may want to open up the reds a little. Um, I think I'm just going to darken them just a little bit. And then you could also see if blue impacts your image. I don't think there was enough blue to alter. All right, so the next thing we could do is we can make some global adjustments to texture if you wanted to, or even your clarity, just to give it a little pop. All right, so after this, I wanna begin making my selective adjustments, and that's where I want to use a luminosity mask. So if you're not familiar, luminosity masks are not a mask that I use a lot. So it's located under range, but it really works well with black and white and with an image like this where you've got specific areas of brightness where you want to increase the texture. So I'm going to click luminance range. And the first thing I want to do is work on the areas that are bright. So I'm going to select up here where it was really white. So now this is going to give us all of those areas and you do have the sliders that you can alter. So we can reduce that if we wanted to, you can leave it where it is. I think I am gonna just slide it down just a little bit. You also have your amount slider. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna play with the exposure here. Um, let me actually start with the whites. I do want this area to be pretty bright. I want it to be a deep contrast to the reflections. So that's the first thing. Um, I want to come down and add some texture and or maybe some dehaze. Let's try dehaze. I'm not sure that I'm getting much with the dehaze. So let's add a little bit maybe of texture in the water or even some clarity. 
So what I'm going to do is zoom in, let's zoom out, and let's zoom in up here, and let's just look at our mask. And I'm going to turn it on and off to kind of see what's happened. So that's before and that's after. So just a subtle difference. But as you look around the image, you can see the brightness is definitely um, just crisper. And I do like the texture and clarity. OK, so that's what I was looking for. So just a little pop there. Now we're going to continue to make some adjustments to these bright areas. But this is our starting point. So next, I'm going to create another mask. And I want to do another luminance, but this time we're going to go for these dark areas. So I'm going to highlight down here where I know in this tree area, there is a lot of the dark shadows. There we go. I think that one's even better. Now we can work on our sliders here. So you can see if I move it over or adjust that way. So what I'm going to do is move the lighter side over. I don't want as much in the lighter areas. I really want to highlight these darker points. OK, so for this, I'm going to start with the shadow slider. I want to open up these shadows a little bit. They were a little dark, but I still want to keep them crisp and black. So we're going to bring that down, but open them up a little bit. Now, I also want to come down and add some texture. That's going to really make those trees plop pop and a little bit of clarity, which makes a big difference, especially in a black and white image, I think. So now let's go up to our mask and I'm going to turn it off. You can see a big difference with this mask. So that's before it's really flat. Look how they pop now. So we've worked on using a luminosity mask to bring some detail and definition to these areas in our image. All right, so that's the first that I'm going to do. I want to now add a second mask, and this is going to be just a standard brush. And so what I want to do is I'm going to reduce the size of this brush, and I'm going to come down and brush this tree over here that has a little bit of highlights on it. And to me, it's not the story, so it's a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to come down and reduce the exposure and just make this a little bit, um, a little bit darker and not as significant. So just going to come in and clean that up. All right, so next step, we are actually going to take this image into Photoshop. So I'm going to load that. I'll be right back into Photoshop. And this is where I want to show, show you some advanced techniques that can really separate your image, bring out the details, and give it that two-dimensional quality that we want when we're highlighting these reflections. These techniques work with any image where you really want to show the contrast and make things stand out and not be so flat, especially when you're shooting on a winter day. So there's a couple techniques that you can try. And these are actually really easy, even if you don't typically use Photoshop. So first, I've duplicated my background layer. And so now I'm going to go to Filter. And the first thing that you can try is we can go to um, Stylize. And I'm going to do an Emboss. This is a really fun technique. You can see it's going to bring out all this incredible texture. You can also decide the direction. So sometimes I flip it around to see what the difference is. I'm looking for um, the most texture and detail that I can get. So I think for this image, I am going to leave it upright. And I've got it at a pretty high height. And you can also change the amount. So I actually want it to be pretty heavy. I'm going to click OK. Now what we're going to do is change the blend mode to overlay. Now you can see it's a lot. It's really heavy. So then we want to bring our opacity layer down. What this has done, though, if I turn it, let me zoom in. If I turn it off and back on, you can see all that incredible detail now in the trees and the water. Now you could mask it off. You could also try. Um, I don't like screen as much. I think overlay works the best if you want to try um, this method. All right, I'm going to turn this one off and I'm going to show you another technique. So I'm going to duplicate the background layer and we've turned off that um, emboss. And now we're going to go to filter other. Now, some of you may have used this before. It's called high pass. This is where it's going to create like a gray layer with all of the um, again, the tone and the texture. 
Now, I like to do it um, pretty high as well, probably around 67, 70. We're going to click OK, and we're going to change that blend mode to overlay. And you can see it has really darkened the shadows as well as brought out detail. So, of course, we want to bring that down maybe closer to you know, maybe 40%. I want to check the trees. You know, I don't want them to look crunchy, so let's turn it off and on. I love the detail it's brought out in the trees. And then now let's look at our water reflections. And I'm going to make sure my um, monitor's not too high. And um, let's turn that off and on. I think it's given us some nice dimension there. So um, I like that one. I think um, it did make things a little, a little dark in the black area. So you just have to be mindful of that versus if we do the emboss. So again, let me show you the difference. Look at how dark those blacks are. Now, if you like the feature of the high pass, you could then come in and do an adjustment on um, your blacks. So we could always modify those. One way to do that would be to just do a tone curve and we can come in and raise the blacks, which are just going to soften them a little bit. So if you don't want them so harsh, you could also bringing them over is going to darken. You could also come in with the tone curve and just raise them just a little bit. Um, that's one way to kind of alter those. So we want to just um, leave them sharp, but not not as drastic as they were. Again, that's the before and that's the after. I think it does look a little bit more natural. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to do a stamped layer, Command, Option, Shift, and the letter E. So now we have a clean layer to work with. And um, what I want to do next is we could also add an oil paint texture to this. So we can go back up to Filter, Stylize. Now you may be thinking oil paint with this. Well, I think oil paint is going to give us a really um, creative element, especially to these trees, which are so kind of whimsical and crossing. So I'm going to go to oil paint. I like to take everything over to the right and keep my lighting over to the left. And I definitely want it to be um, just upright. So we're just going to keep that kind of standard. Let me move it right over. And I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to look really whimsical at first. And what I want to do is just bring that opacity down probably to just going to play with it. That's a little too whimsical, probably around 30, 35. Now, if you don't like what it's done in your water or in the trees, you can remove it from there. So let's turn it off and look at our water. And I don't see a big difference. It has kind of smoothed it out, which I like, but I love what it did in the trees. So it's just taking all that detail we added and kind of smoothing it out a little bit and I think it's just giving it a really beautiful quality which is what I saw when I was there. The branches just kind of draping one over the other and I think it takes our emphasis to the water. All right so the last thing I think it's the last that I want to do is use a gray layer to really pop the brighter spots and bring just a little bit more dimension to this image. So to do that, you're going to go down to create a layer, but you're going to hold your option key. That's going to bring up the new layer box. We want to go down to mode and select overlay, then checkbox fill with a neutral color 50% gray layer. Click OK, and that's going to give you a gray layer. This is a really non-destructive, very delicate way to alter and do kind of your dodging where we're going to enhance the whites. So we want to make sure you're on a white color and grab your brush. And for opacity, um, you could start at 100% on your brush. It's going to be very bright, but then we can modify it. So I like to go ahead and work at 100%. I'm just going to come around and you can see how I'm kind of enhancing parts of the image. Now that is super bright. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that layer down to about 50%. And I'm just going to continue to accent where I want some of the brighter areas of this image. And so I'm just going to bring out some of the detail. And this is where you can get really customized. You can use this kind of medium sized brush. You could also use a smaller brush to get into some of the areas. 
and I'm just bringing life, what I call light and light to um, some of these areas in the scene. So I'm just going to kind of pop that around to really draw your eye to where those reflections and the beauty of the image is. I love this little area over here. So again, play with your opacity slider. So I'm just going to modify that. You can turn it off and then turn it on to see where you've impacted. It's kind of like bringing light to it. Now, if you feel like it's too much in any way, you can add a layer mask. You can flip it to black and I would take my opacity and my brush down to maybe 10% and then you could modify. So let me make the brush smaller. And if I want to kind of um, remove it from some areas may need to take the brush up a little bit more you can come in see how i can just um, tweak that so if there's parts that you think maybe got a little too bright um, again what i would do is turn this off and on and really look at it so like this is an area i want to bring that down i'm going to bring this down just a little so um, you can take your time as you're adding, and it's really all about customizing these areas to give your image that final kind of beautiful look. So I'm going to just blend this. I like this little spot of brightness, but I want to just bring some of that dimension back and reduce right there. So again, I'm going to stand back. I'm going to turn it off, turn it on, and I really like these nice um, pops of um, brightness and light. Now I still see some dark, uh, some bright areas over here. So you could go back into Lightroom and modify that if you wanted. You could also use the dodge fill feature. We could also just try our um, spot healing. I'm gonna make it small. And I think there was a sign back here. I'm just gonna, um, oh, we need a new layer to do that. So let's go ahead and add a layer just going to go over that in this one strip. I think it'll be just as easy to use the heel. There we go. There's a little brightness down here. So just final tweaks really don't have anything to do with reflections, but um, I just like to show you how I kind of finalize the image. So at this point, I would probably be pretty satisfied with this. You could add a um, really light texture to the image if you want it. Now, another way to bring out details in your reflections would be to use a program like Topaz AI. Topaz Labs has their Sharpen AI. That is gonna do a very similar technique to what I did with High Pass or Emboss. So if you like to run your images through AI Topaz, that's also a way to really bring out and sharpen those details. Overall, I think the key to bringing out your reflection images is to manage the lights and the dark, so your highlights and your shadows. So once you've done your basic edits, really think about how you can enhance these gorgeous reflections using dodge and burn, using gray layers, all of those different features. All right, thanks so much. Hope you have a great day.